Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be checking out Axel. Uh, it's a minimalistic uh, arch based distribution. It comes with window managers only as an option. Uh, of course you could install your own after but um, we're going to be checking this out today. Uh, not many people know about Axel but I, uh, I thought I'd make a quick video on it. It's not like this is going to make it blow up or anything as this is again brand new YouTube channel but uh, the documentation is pretty uh, pretty basic uh, it just touches the key binds and and that's really it really uh, Kali install of course uh, and that's it so let's go ahead and check this out today so after you've went ahead and hit the download button and got the ISO we're going to be heading over into VirtualBox uh, for this installation now I'm sure you can get this to work with VMware if you even know how to use VMware you pretty easily be able to set this up it's basically the same thing but I'm just going to run through it with you on VirtualBox so it's as simple as just creating a new machine call this Axel obviously it's a Linux and it's arch based we're going to give it around 4 gigs of RAM just for this test as again uh, just going to be quickly showing it you um, I do quickly want to say that the system may not run as well as it would on actual hardware. Again, this is a virtual machine, so it's not like it's going to be running at its full potential. But we will get a general idea of just how lightweight this machine is. Um, I've already installed it and used it on hardware, and I can definitely say that there is a big difference. But uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and set up this machine so once you've pretty much just done everything that I've done you're ready to go unless you want to use an internal network then uh, you're good to go if you're using a window manager as your host for me I'm using i3 you want to make sure this is off else it won't run very well or it won't show at all in full screen um, so you want to make sure this is off if you're using a window manager and also if you've never used a window manager before then uh, in Axel you're going to want to make sure this setting is off if you ever do use VirtualBox in there so once we've done that we can go ahead and start up the machine right so once we're in uh, just go ahead and uh, press this one if you want to install this with uh, NVIDIA graphics then go ahead for the second one but otherwise just go for this one the time again is a little slower for me as this is on a virtual machine and it's not like we spec'd out the virtual machine either, but once you boot in, you will most likely be very surprised actually on how just how nice this looks. So this is the live install. You can see over here on the conky. Uh, just take a moment to look at how nice this machine really is. I want to quickly go ahead and show you as a live user uh, just how nice this runs. So we are running at around 400 megabytes out of, of RAM, again, on a virtual machine, so we have all the virtual processes too, but 380 megs on boot is very, very, very lightweight, especially for a distribution that's already configured and just ready to go straight out the box. It has a lot of things installed too, uh, obviously you're going to need to install your own stuff as well, but um, for a out-of-the-box distribution, this is very nice. Obviously, there's distributions like Void Linux, which have different Linux systems, which also run at around 200 megabytes on startup, including uh, required and also additional uh, processes and programs that I run on that. And uh, But this seems to be very lightweight. The commands are to open an, a terminal is mod, which is Windows key, and enter. That's how you open terminals. And to close Windows, you want to press mod and C. Um, but again, to get into the uh, install, we're going to open D menu, which is your Windows key and D, and then we can go ahead and type in Kali install. And then you get the generic, you know, installer that we have on pretty much all distributions. Everyone, everyone uses these types of installs now, uh, other than Void, which honestly is a lot nicer in my opinion. But in here. For the drivers, again, this all depends on what you want to do. If you want to install NVIDIA drivers, if you have a NVIDIA GPU, you want to go with the top one up here. You also want to install the Intel ones if you're on a 
uh, Intel laptop, for example, if you're on a ThinkPad or any other laptop that uses Intel and Intel, Intel graphics, sorry, you want to go for this one. Uh, the the Novu GPU is kind of just your overall, I would say. Uh, not many of you are going to need to use this. And your AMD GPU, self-explanatory. Um, but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and go with the AMD GPU. Or oh, actually, I'm going to go with this one. And click next. Um, so here you can choose some extra packages like Discord, which I'm guessing a lot of you are probably going to go with. Signal Desktop, which I personally don't use Signal. I know Signal is good, but I don't have a phone number at all. I make everyone contact me through another application. Telegram, again, I don't need any of these installed, uh, but you can install them very, uh, very quickly just through the packages over here. Now, a lot of you are probably going to want to get Caden Live and GIMP. Uh, these two, you really do need them. Kedon Live is for video, edi uh, video editing and GIMP is for your image editing. So if you're a Windows user and you're going to Linux for the first time, uh, you will definitely want these two for your videos and this one for images. Um, games, Minecraft Launcher. I wouldn't recommend getting Minecraft Launcher. There's other applications out there like Lunar Client, which are way better. Um, as for Office, personally, and I think for the majority of you, you're going to want to select all the Office ones. Uh, very useful, especially fresh. Uh, you could just go with fresh, honestly. Um, this is for documents, reading, writing, as it says right here. Media, VLC, uh, MPD I would go with, and Kava maybe. Uh, this all just depends, but I think you definitely want to have VLC and MPD. Uh, on the next page, if it'll load, this is where you can choose the window manager you want to use. Now, I personally would recommend Xmonad. I think from the testing I've done that it runs the most lightweight and it also looks the nicest. Um, you can actually see on over here uh, what they're going to look like. So the one that I would go with is Xmonad. It shows you a little preview right here. Is this is what you're going to be ending up with. This is just the looks. I think it looks super nice and uh, it does again it runs very lightweight. The only issue with it is it is coded in Haskell. So if you don't know Haskell, you might have a little bit difficult time getting used to configuring it. Um, but again, if you're out there and you just want a minimalistic tiling window manager that's easy to config, I would go with Qtile. The rest of them I'm not going to be talking about in this video just because I don't have enough experience with these two. And this one, again, I've only ever used in live environments and, of course, switched to either Qtile, Xmonad, or i3. Which, again, I can show you how to install i3, but I'm guessing the majority of you know how to install that. So, depending on what you want to go for, an easy-to-config one, the Qtile one is definitely the one for you. Otherwise, I would suggest going with Xmonad. So, let's get back into the machine, and we're going to be choosing Qtile. You can install all of them and just switch between them all, but, again, Qtile... Uh, this is the one that you're going to want to go for. We're going to be going for Xmonad. You all know how to do this. Just your keyboard layouts. And again, you can encrypt the system. I really, really, really would recommend that you encrypt your system. Yeah, you can also download other encryptions later on and encrypt uh, partitions and folders themselves. But um, for me, I'm not going to encrypt this system just because it's on a virtual machine. I'm just trying to show this off a little bit. But you can definitely go ahead and encrypt your machine. I would highly recommend that. Enter whatever you need to enter in here. And again, use the same password for the administrator account. I've always used this. It's not really unsafe to do so, as long as the password that you use isn't something that you really put online on the internet. Like, for example, signing up to websites with... Um, but there you go, and we can go ahead and click install. Now I'm guessing this is probably going to take around three or four minutes, as there's not really much to see. You can already see how quick it's going, and again on a virtual machine, so I will be back um, once we're done installing. So the system just finished installing, so now we're going to go ahead and restart the machine. And now we can boot into our newly created operating system. Boot time is around, I think around 2 seconds. Um, here is where you can select uh, which one you want to use. So we're going to go with the Xmonad. And let's go ahead and select right. And go ahead and enter the password. And we will log in. Let's go ahead and full screen. And there is the Xmonad install. So once we're in here, let's go ahead and see what has changed since our live install. We run... 
Hitch up over here, we can see that we're around the same, actually a little bit under in sometimes, uh, in the memory usage. Sometimes dipping down under 300. So, I want to quickly go ahead and talk about who this distribution is good for and what you should do about this distribution. So, if you are a Windows user or a uh, Linux user who uses a desktop environment like GNOME, Mate, or Kden, and you want a more minimalistic machine and you want a better privacy, more secure machine, then this is the way to go. Uh, this machine comes pre-configured, it has all its essentials downloaded, and it's very easy to use. If you would like to install something, you just use the Arch user repository. And as you can see right here, for example, I was doing a little test earlier, and you just type in yay dash s, capital S, if you wanted to get something from the repository, Discord. This will install Discord, as you can see. So let me show you how this works. Is yay is searching the Arch user repository. So the Arch user repository, as I'll quickly show you, I know I messed up my typing there, don't hit on me, but it's not the Arch user repository, yes it is. The Arch user repository is where you find packets, so, uh, or packages, sorry. So let's say you want to find Discord, and you want to install Discord, and you want to do it from the command line. You type in Discord, and everything about Discord comes up here. As you can see, alternate Discord clients, blah 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 blah. But if you want the like, uh, if you want to do it in your terminal, sorry, you just type in yay dash lowercase s Discord, right? And this will list everything from that Arch user repository, so you don't have to go ahead and look it up. Um, it can be quite hectic, but normally everything that is used a lot. So, for example, the actual Discord install that you want is at the very top bottom. It's run by the community. Um, you have Discord Canary too, which is. Uh, Discord, but has like all the, it's like the beta version, you could say, so it has all the updates before the actual client one, so this may be less stable, so I'd always recommend going with the actual Discord. So you would just go ahead and press 1, because you want number 1, the Discord, and you go ahead and press yes, because you want to install it, and boom, you're installing Discord. It's so simple to use, and it's not like, uh, it's not like we don't have package managers, which I don't believe this one has, as I just uh, looked up. This one does not actually have it, which is, you know, completely fine. You also have Pac-Man, which uh, Pac-Man is for updating the system. So, for example, Pac-Man dash S or dash Y, S-U-Y. Okay, got to run that as sudo. We'll go ahead and do a system upgrade because system upgrade, yes. And what this does is upgrade your system. So there's your automatic system upgrade. You can do this whenever you want to. There is no time or no forced updates. You can update your system whenever you want to. It's very easy to use and it comes with everything essential already installed. As I said, network manager installed. Polybar, pretty sure is installed. Yes, Polybar. So everything is pre installed on this distribution. And again, it runs super lightweight, as you can see, 600 megs, and that's with two workspaces and Firefox open. So this machine really targets the people who are on Windows and want to learn Linux. This is the probably the best way to go. And it also uses window managers, which is really good because it's very lightweight. And that's something that you as a user uh, would like. Um, the more lightweight your system is at running, the more applications, the more programs, the more scripts, the more anything you can do on it. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this video. Just a quick, uh, a quick show off of the um, the distribution. There'll be links in the description to both my Twitter, where you can go ahead and DM me, follow me, get accepted, and DM me about any questions that you have about the machine. And also, there'll be a link to the website and the GitHub, where you can find the configuration files, um, the documentation, and of course the download. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.